This video demonstrates how to set up a full kinetic simulation of steel refining in a ladle furnace using the process metallurgy module in Thermocalc. The simulation is based on a steel refining process used at the Arcelor Middle DeFasco plant in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. The process was described in a publication by Graham and Irons in 2009. Gaps in the reported process parameters in the original publication are filled in following the assumptions made by Van End and Jung, who set up a similar simulation of this ladle furnace process using the EERZ model in a paper in 2017. A link to this paper is in the video description. The calculation used in this example is included in all Thermocalc installations, beginning with Thermocalc 2020B. You can access it from the Help menu, Examples Files, Process Metallurgy, PMET 06. A TCOX database of version 8 or newer is required to run the calculation. There is also a PDF available which explains this example in detail. A link to the PDF is included in the description of the video. In the video, I will briefly describe the ladle refining process that is simulated in the example. I'll then give some information about the kinetic model used to simulate the reactions. Then I'll show you how to set up the simulation using the process metallurgy module in Thermocalc. And finally, I'll discuss the results of the calculation. The image on the screen shows the ladle refining process that is simulated in this video. The most important process steps are shown from left to right. For example, at 1 minute, 105 kilograms of aluminum is added to a ladle furnace that contains 165 tons of liquid steel and 4.95 tons of slag. The aluminum reacts with the oxygen in the liquid steel to create aluminum oxide inclusions, which gradually float up and out of the liquid steel and join the slag. During the whole processing time, the slag reacts with the liquid steel, taking up certain elements such as sulfur. The goal of the entire process is to refine the steel using additions and heat treatments at various time steps. The process metallurgy module makes it easy to set up such a simulation, and when we look at the module, we will see this information reflected there. The kinetics of the reaction between the steel and slag are simulated using the Effective Equilibrium Reaction Zone model, or EERZ for short. Also, the heating and cooling of the ladle and the flotation of non-metallic inclusions as a function of time is simulated. The possibility to perform such kinetic simulations as a function of time using the process metallurgy module was introduced in Thermocalc 2020B. Details of the model and how these processes are implemented can be found in the PDF accompanying this video. The thermodynamic equilibria of the various reactions taking place are calculated using the CALFAD database TCOX10, but it can also be simulated with TCOX8, TCOX9, or newer versions. I will now show you how to set up the simulation in Thermocalc. The process metallurgy module is accessed from the home screen of Thermocalc simply by clicking on the icon. In the Process Metallurgy module, you first select whether you will perform an equilibrium calculation or a process simulation, which includes kinetics. You then set the basic conditions of the simulation, as I have done, as well as the duration. Now we will set up the kinetic simulation. A kinetic simulation of any metallurgical process in the Process Metallurgy module requires setting up three basic steps. First, you edit the process model, where general kinetic parameters are defined. Next, you define all the material compositions that are to be used during the process in the Materials tab. Finally, the steel making recipe is entered in the Process Schedule tab, which defines at what times how much of which materials are added. Let's go through each step in detail. In the Edit Process Model window, general kinetic parameters are defined. It is assumed that they are related only to the type of process and geometry of the equipment that is used in the experiment and must only be defined once for a certain process. The idea is that there will be one set of parameters for the specific ladle furnace you use, a different set of parameters for your basic oxygen furnace, a different for your vacuum degasser, and so on. You set the parameters for each only once, save them for later use, and then you can easily access them each time you set up a simulation. The program offers default values, and we will use those for pressure and the density of the steel and slag zones. 
Note that in steel making and refining, the pressure mainly influences reactions involving the gas phase. The pressure effect on reactions involving condensed phases is negligible. Also note that in the current release, only two zones can be used. Next is the reactions. This is where the kinetics of the reaction between the two zones is defined. The kinetics are a function of the area where reactions can take place, in this case the cross-section of the steel slag interface, and how fast the mass transport is to and away from this reacting interface. The reaction kinetics are defined by mass transfer coefficients in the steel and the slag. Many suggestions for numerical values can be found in literature coming from experiments and CFD simulations. Transfer of phase group is primarily used to calculate inclusion flotation. In this example, adding aluminum to the steel zone containing 100 parts per million of dissolved oxygen at time one minute results in the formation of solid aluminum oxides, also known as corundum, as we discussed when looking at the image. These will gradually float up out of the liquid steel and combine with the slag phase on top. The settings mean that 3% of oxides are removed from the steel zone and transferred to the slag zone per minute. Finally, we set the heat, where addition and removal of heat and heat transfer between zones is defined. The total amount of heat lost by convection and radiation is given as a constant cooling value of 3.2 megawatts. A zone must be defined where the heat is lost from. Here we assume the heat is lost from the steel zone only. As heat can be added to different zones, the temperatures of the steel zone, slag zone, and reaction zone can be very different. Temperature differences are evened out by heat flowing from the hotter zone to the cooler one. The amount of heat that is transferred is defined by setting a heat transfer coefficient. A large value will result in a quick equalization of the temperature. Here, we set a heat transfer coefficient between the steel and slag zone of 5,000 watts per square meter and Kelvin. For the heat that is added by active heating, for example using an electric arc, only the heating efficiency is given here. The electric power in megawatts and power on, power off times are given later in the process schedule. However, the zone to which the heat is added must be defined. Here we assume that the heat from the electric arc is added to the reaction zone. The next step is to define your materials in the Materials tab. The first time you run a simulation, you will automatically be given one steel, one slag, and one gas configuration. You can easily add and remove materials. To define a raw material, click Show Composition and fill in all of the fields, adding elements as needed. Once a material is defined, it can be saved so you can use it in subsequent simulations. The idea being that users can compile a library of materials that are generally used in their own steel plant or research facility. I will now show the compositions of each of the seven materials used in this simulation, as well as the zone to which they are added and their temperature before addition. If you are setting up the simulation, Pause the video and enter the materials, as shown on the screen. The third and final step in setting up a kinetic simulation is to set up the process schedule. This is the actual steelmaking recipe that defines at which time how much of each material is added to the ladle furnace. When you first click on the process schedule tab, all of your defined materials are listed in order. The time unit corresponds to what we set under conditions. One item that bears mentioning is electric arc heating. This only appears if you set it in the process model by selecting heat under the heat section and giving it this name. The first step in setting up your schedule is to set your time steps in the top horizontal row. These are the times at which additions will be made or heat or cooling will be applied. The next step is to set the unit for each material. You can decide between a set amount, which will be added once at the defined time, or adding a continuous flow per second or minute, as we have set for argon. Finally, you enter your additions for each material. For instance, at zero minutes, we add 165 tons of steel, 4.95 tons of slag, and we begin adding 0.167 cubic meters of argon per minute. You continue entering these figures until the process schedule is complete. 
As you fill out your table, a plot appears that corresponds to the table to help guide you in setting up the schedule. Once your table is set up, you configure the plot nodes based on the results you want to see. All results are shown as a function of time because these are kinetic simulations. Then click Perform at the bottom center of the program. This example includes four plots. The first plot we will look at shows the temperature of the steel, slag, and steel-slag reaction zones throughout the process. The heat lost by radiation and convection is assumed to be removed from the steel zone, as we set in the process model. This is the reason why, in general, the temperature of the steel zone is lowest, as shown by the red line. The heat input by electric arc heating, on the other hand, is assumed to go into the reaction zone. This is the reason why the reaction zone, shown as the green line, is much hotter than both the steel and the slag zone during arcing. The heat is added to the reaction zone, then flows into both the steel zone and the slag zone when the reaction zone is mixing back into the steel and slag zone at the end of each time step. At each time when additions are made, the resulting temperature changes in the zones to which the additions are made can be observed and interpreted. At time equals 20 minutes, for example, it is seen that the addition of 100 kilograms of calcium oxide to the slag zone results in a significant lowering of the temperature of the slag zone. The aluminum and ferromanganese additions, on the other hand, result in a temperature increase of the steel zone. The reason for this is the strongly exothermal reaction of the aluminum with the dissolved oxygen. The next plot shows the liquid metal composition. It is reassuring to see that already this simple model captures all the relevant chemistry changes in the liquid steel. The experimentally determined sulfur, manganese, and titanium contents are reproduced to within experimental accuracy. The aluminum and silicon content in the liquid steel are satisfactorily reproduced. However, the aluminum content seems slightly on the high side, whereas the silicon is slightly on the low side. Possible reasons for these deviations and ways to improve the fit are discussed in detail in the accompanying PDF for the example. In the next plot, we can see that the general trend of the experimentally determined slag composition is also well produced. While the composition of the main slag constituents, calcium oxide, aluminum oxide, and magnesium oxide, do not change much, if we zoom into the plot, we can see that excellent agreement is achieved for the prediction of the decrease of manganese oxide and iron oxide contents in the slag phase by reduction reactions. Also, the increase in sulfur content due to desulfurization of the liquid steel by the slag phase is very well reproduced. The calculated decrease of the silicon dioxide content, on the other hand, is somewhat underestimated. This matches what we saw in the first plot with the underestimation of the silicon pickup in the liquid steel and suggests that the model underestimates the reversal of silicon from the slag to the steel during processing. Again, the interested viewer is referred to the PDF for more information on the reason for this discrepancy and ways to improve the description. In the final plot, the calculated and measured inclusion compositions are compared. Up to about 25 minutes into processing, the inclusions are almost pure solid corundum. Then a second population of manganese oxide rich spinel inclusions start forming. This result captures the essence of what is experimentally observed. We hope you found this video useful. For more information about the Process Metallurgy module or any of our other products, visit our website at www.thermocalc.com where you can watch additional videos and read the complete analysis of this example.